Hi and welcome everybody to this brief tutorial on turning um, numeric exercises into single choice exercises using the RXAMS package. The point of all of this is uh, to make this all uh, dynamic and we will combine two previous tutorials that um, we have seen on YouTube, uh, namely the one on single choice questions and the one on numeric questions into uh, this, this new one. And I have already started my R and uh, copied a couple of exercises here. Deriv and Deriv2 are two exercises that are shipped within the package. And the X Deriv1 to 5 exercises are um, provided in a blog post on the RXM's webpage. I'm putting the link in the description to this video. For um, all of the exercises, I'm only using the R Markdown version. There are also R LaTeX versions available for um, all of the files. Um, I will mostly focus on the uh, XDERIF um, version of the exercises, which is um, proceeds in a little more uh, granular fashion. The DERIF and DERIF2 exercises are slightly more advanced and um, are available uh, within the package, as I said. And um, the main additional tool we will uh, need, um, um, in addition to the ones we've already seen in the previous uh, videos, is the function uh, num to s choice. And I'm opening um, the uh, documentation page here, which is a function that helps us turning one numeric solution into a choice list always with five answer alternatives. And um, if I'm increasing uh, the size here uh, just uh, a little bit, we can see that there are uh, a number of options. We can include the correct solution. We can uh, include possible mistakes, wrong solutions, um, a range, a certain delta between the solutions um, and so on. But we will come back to that in just um, a minute. The starting point um, is that um, we assume that we know what kind of exercise we're turning um, into a dynamic single choice exercise here. And um, first I've included a numeric exercise that is um, uh, completely static, has only one version associated with it. So I'm loading my exams package and then I'm saying exams to HTML on this xderif1 um, exercise which um, compiles and uh, opens in the browser and then you can see what the result looks like. Here we're asked to compute a certain derivative of um, a product um, uh, combining um, uh, x to the power of 7 and a certain exponential function and we should evaluate um, the derivative at a certain point and then we have here a very brief version of the solution how to compute this answer. If we switch back into R, we see how this um, is coded in the exercise. We have um, a question section, then we have um, a solution section. For the mathematical notation, we use uh, LaTeX, uh, but the overall structure is uh, Markdown. And then in the meta information, <coughs> We have the type, numeric, the correct solution, a short name, and a tolerance for the correct solution. And um, in the numeric exercise uh, video, um, we have already seen how we can make this dynamic, namely by um, making uh, the function description uh, dynamic so we can um, uh, modify the power here, that's our um, constant a, then we can uh, sample this coefficient in the exponential function b and uh, we can sample the um, uh, argument x at which we want to evaluate all of this. And um, this is done in the R code chunk up here. We have this constant a, b, c. Um, that are drawn from a certain uh, relatively simple range in this case and then we could compute the correct solution and both in the question and the solution environment we insert the right numbers 
and uh, in the meta information we also insert uh, the correct solution the correct result the res and we round this to two digits using the format fmt function from the rxams package if you need more information about this go see the video on uh, the numeric exercises then we can of course um, also turn this um, numeric exercise into a single choice exercise in the following way i'm showing you first uh, the result again so switching to the browser again uh, here we see the result so um, rather than um, letting uh, the participants of a certain test um, enter the numeric solution directly i'm offering five answer alternatives uh, one of which is the correct solution um, you may have noticed it was 4.57 and so the other four solutions are some distractors that we put in here and um, in the solution we have um, essentially the same thing switching back to r we can look at what the meta information looks like and uh, we see that this um, type now became s choice for single choice and um, the solution became 00100 indicating that the third of five answer alternatives is the correct one okay so the main task um, that we're trying to accomplish in this tutorial is um, turning this single choice version of the exercise also into a dynamic um, exercise so that we um, draw not only the parameters of the function um, that we called a b and c before but we also want to set up this answer list um, dynamically um, with suitable distractors and we will use two sources of um, distractors um, first and most importantly we will have um, random um, numbers from a certain interval and second we can also include typical arithmetic mistakes if we want to do that we don't have to do that okay and uh, this version of the exercise is called expderif4 and is the one we're going to look at um, here so if we move up to the beginning of uh, the exercise we first have a code chunk that looks very similar to the code chunk we had seen before so we're sampling the three parameters a b and c and then we compute the correct solution i'm doing that here for one random version and then we see what um, a b and c um, uh, have been uh, selected and um, then we want to uh, set up uh, the corresponding um, question list and for this um, uh, this question list um, we're using uh, the the function num to s choice and before we're doing that for this particular um, exercise I'm going to show you a couple of um, things uh, about the num to s choice function in general the examples i'm broadly following here are from the uh, manual page and um, so you can look at the arguments uh, some details are explained and um, then we have these examples um, at the very end and of course you can um, evaluate them interactively by saying examples of um, uh, num to s choice but here i'm going through them one by one so first we uh, take one output um, that is um, um, that does not need further arguments. So we say num to s choice equivalently. Um, we could have said uh, num to s choice um, if we wanted to, like we use in the exams to PDF and exams to HTML functions. And um, num to s choice is given here only the correct solution, which is 123.45. And um, then the function goes off and um, computes a certain range. Um, by default, it goes from 
half of the correct solution uh, to one and a half of the correct solution. So here roughly from 60 to 180 and a little bit. And um, then it uses our UNIF um, for drawing uniform um, random numbers from a certain interval and uh, generates uh, four distractors. So it always sets up um, a list with uh, five alternatives altogether. If you only want to use a subset of these later on, you can of course do so if you wish. And um, here we see that um, we, uh, we get the correct solution in the first position and uh, then we get uh, four distractors added um, afterwards and um, we get um, as a result a list with two elements the solutions a logical vector and the questions a character vector which already contains suitable latex markup uh, with the dollar in the beginning and the dollar in the end which adds um, math markup um, in the question and if i'm running uh, the same uh, command again you see that uh, this function also already performs some shuffling so that the correct solution is not always in the first position but uh, the position is uh, varied randomly moreover uh, the function internally first um, selects um, where the four um, incorrect solutions um, should go whether sh they should all be on the left of the correct solution or all on the right of the correct solution or um, to here to there one and three and so on and um, by this it should be assured that um, if the interval is not symmetrical around the correct solution we still get um, um, a uniform distribution for the uh, rank of the correct solution in the answer list so that uh, the correct solution is not um, most likely the smallest number or one of the two smallest numbers or uh, one of the two largest numbers or something like that and um, you see the default is um, to include um, uh, two digits um, after the decimal point of course, um, we can also say we want to have uh, zero digits, then the correct solution is rounded uh, to zero digits to, to an integer and also um, all incorrect solutions um, are um, drawn as uh, integers uh, rather than um, uh, floating point numbers. And um, we can also say um, for example, the delta should be um, a certain thing, for example, 10, um, and the range should be from uh, 0 to 200, uh, for example, and then uh, this will assure that um, the um, five alternatives are within this range between 0 and 200, and it will assure that the minimum distance between all of the numbers is at least 10. And um, this is all uh, relatively easy if the correct solution is large enough. It becomes um, more difficult if the correct solution is relatively small in comparison to the, um, uh, to the delta. And the default delta, as I said, is uh, um, 1. And so when we... Um, uh, compute um, a single choice list for point one two three four. this cannot work. The default is um, to produce a range from uh, around about 0.06 to 0.18 and uh, there's of course not enough space to include five answer alternatives in that range with the delta of one. One solution would be to make the delta um, a lot smaller and uh, then it works again. Another solution uh, would be to make the range larger, something like this from minus five to five. Of course, uh, this would also work. For um, some um, fine tuning though, um, this might not be, be possible, for example, if we want uh, the correct solution to be 
in the range from um, 0 to 1 because for example this is a probability and um, we want um, all answer alternatives to be probabilities between 0 and 1 then um, we either have to choose um, a delta that is very small if we don't want to make it too small in order to um, not make two answer alternatives too similar we can um, make the delta for example 0.03 and then there's the possibility to say we want to use a different method called delta and this works also I said previously the default method is to use runif random uniform numbers um, to, to draw the distractors however if we have a relatively small range uh, with a relatively large delta, as we have set up here, <coughs> we might have to sample for a very long time to get uh, four uh, incorrect numbers on the left of point one, two, uh, three, four, or um, uh, four um, solutions on the right of it. And um, to avoid these long uh, sampling times one possibility is to set up a regular grid with the spell spacing of delta so in this case we start out from 0.12 our correct solution rounded to two digits and then we take steps of 0.03 to the left and to the right um, up to zero and one and uh, then we have this regular grid with a grid size 0.03 and then um, discrete uniform sampling is used for drawing the distractors from from this grid okay so now i've given you um, an overview of what this um, num to s choice function uh, can do in this case and um, now it depends on the kind of exercise which of these features uh, we want to use and in this particular case, um, if you look into our global environment, we have the situation that the uh, solution is relatively small, but um, we, um, um, we just need to set up a suitable range and a suitable delta um, to deal with this. And uh, for the range, I'm using uh, the following line. I'm saying if the result is lower than 4, then I'm using uh, the range from uh, 0.5 to um, point, uh, 5.5. And um, if um, my result is 4 or larger, I'm using uh, the numbers, um, the, the range from half of the correct solution to one and a half of the correct solution. So in this case, if we execute that, uh, we're in the situation where we use uh, the range from 0.5 to 5.5. And um, then uh, you see that uh, our correct solution is 0.57. So we will still have a problem with this when we use the delta of 0.1 that we want to use here. And um, we will see in, um, oh wait, we omit these errors for a moment. I'll show you what these do um, a second later. And uh, we execute this. And then we see that um, uh, performing this num to s choice call uh, gives an error. It says the specified range is too small for delta. And if we look what the function returns in this case, it's null. So we see that uh, num to s choice wasn't able to find um, a suitable um, uh, setup for us. And this is the reason why in our code chunk, we have started with um, initializing the whole thing uh, with null and then saying while um, the single choice list SC is null, we keep on drawing no new parameters and uh, setting up new solutions. So if I'm doing that, I'm skipping the two errors um, again, coming back to them in a second. 
and now we see that our correct solution is four point something the range was then selected to be uh, about two to six um, and uh, the delta of 0.1 is no problem and then we have our single choice list that is correctly formatted okay now for the um, typical arithmetic mistakes we want to include um, using two here the first uh, one is uh, using um, only the derivative of uh, the first uh, factor um, x to the power of a and the derivative is then a times um, x to the power of a minus 1 evaluated at c and we're um, uh, erroneously omitting uh, the derivative of um, the exponential function and uh, the second typical mistake we're including um, has um, the um, derivative of the exponential function but it forgot the inner derivative um, b that should be included b times x of b times c so we have these two typical mistakes um, we we can include and in num to s choice we're um, including them with um, the wrong argument so i'm carrying out this part again and we see that um, the um, wrong solution um, uh, error one is around about 3.8 and error two is 4.7 so one is smaller the other one is larger than the correct solution and um, if we look at the single choice list that was set up by num to s choice then we have uh, the correct solution here and uh, the um, error one is included here at the end and uh, the error two is included here in the beginning so we have both of our distractors included and then there are also two random numbers that are randomly selected okay and now we essentially have everything in place the um, question um, looks just like it looked before in the plain numeric version we're just inserting the three constants a b and c and then we have an additional code chunk here that uh, produces the um, uh, the answer list and if we want to look what this returns we say um, answer list on um, the questions um, uh, element of SC and then it produces this in markdown uh, markup so that we can um, include it as is um, in the question here and then we can also do the same um, with uh, this answer list that uh, produces just uh, the the true and false statements um, which are not so helpful but some learning management um, systems display them right next to uh, the answer alternatives after answering the questions Moodle does this for example so it's um, um, is sometimes um, helpful to have these included as well then uh, finally we um, need to uh, include uh, the um, correct solution this is stored as logical vector and uh, with the function m choice to string uh, we can turn this into the sequence of zeros and ones that we need so if we um, say um, exams to html of x deref 4 and uh, we switch to the browser we see that we get exactly what we wanted to have we get um, the, uh, the question with the corresponding question list and um, the uh, solution with the corresponding list and uh, we also see that um, here the parameters are varied again um, as a final uh, small variation of um, the uh, exercise we have um, an x derivative um, 5 exercise 
and um, you will see that essentially this looks uh, the same but look at line 16 one additional line of code shows up sometimes um, um, teachers want to include a none of the above um, question in the question list and uh, this is as easy as um, just turning the fifth number into the string none of the above. If we're looking at our SC list um, in this case that we had before, then we're just uh, omitting the number 3.82 and uh, replacing it uh, with the string none of the above. And um, if this number that we omitted was the correct one, then the answer none of the above is also the correct one. If it was false, as this in this case, then the um, statement none of the above is also false. So by um, compiling this and looking at it uh, in the browser, we, um, we can see that now the last distractor is uh, none of the above and it may or may not be uh, the true exercise. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you find more um, uh, details and also the RLaTeX version of the exercises in uh, the blog of uh, the R exams uh, webpage. I'm including the link in the description of this video. Thank you.